ever. All right, let's get ready for this <laughs> exciting Bible study. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Roads to Forever. I'm Terry. And I'm Kyle. Hey, guys. And we're excited because it's Friday night, which means we're back for another Bible study. And tonight, what we'll be looking at is Revelation 12 explained. So we are going to be having an in-depth Bible study. You guys know how we do here every Friday night with our uh, Bible study. So let us know who you are in the chat box and where you're joining us from. Um, we're so excited um, to have you guys here with us. So again, um, Revelation 12 tonight, and there is a lot of information to cover. Mm -hmm. Our song of the night will come a little bit later on <laughs> tonight. Kyle doesn't even know what the song of the night is. but as you, bad. I need to know what's going on here. We're <laughs> supposed to be a team. <laughs> we are a team, but as usual, I the song of the night is generally related to um, one of the verses from tonight's Bible study. So come to Christ and her husband are here. She said, hello, hello, guys. Hello, hello, hey, back. guys. Um, man, I wish we could have connected this week. It's been such a busy week. So like yeah, um, we haven't been able to connect like <laughs> offline off of the chat with some of our regulars. But um, come to Christ, Lorai and Mike uh, and Malachi. Welcome. So good to have you guys back here with us. Um, don't know who else is joining us. But again, let us know in the chat box who you are and where you're joining us from. If you're watching this um, as a replay, just let us know in the comments what your biggest takeaway is from tonight's Bible study. Uh, Come to Christ said they had a very busy week. Uh, Donovan <laughs> is here. Um, he says Wagwan, so he's using some Jamaican patwa. Okay, Donovan, I'll well, take it. <laughs> <my youth. laughs> so uh, welcome, Donovan, who's here for another Revelation uh, Bible study. So uh, tonight, like I said, we're doing Revelation 12 explained. Mm -hmm. So you guys know um, how it goes. So Mo M says, happy Sabbath, guys. I'm watching from California. Awesome. Oh, hi, Mo Cali. M. Happy Sabbath to you as well. Um, uh, excited you're joining us from California. That's okay. where our friend Zama lives. She's in L.A. Um, so we're excited, Mo, that you're joining us. Oh, and Zama and there's, is here. There's L.A. Hey, Zama. <laughs> hey, Zama. Welcome. So she says, hello, everyone. So, again, let us know who you are, where you're joining us from. And as always, please... Um, put any questions or comments or you have in the chat box. The questions you see, we have six questions to go over tonight. Guys, we know there was a lot in this passage, but um, as you can imagine, uh, the last time we were on Bible study, guys, we went for almost two hours. It was a long night, guys. Yeah, that was really long. So um, tonight we're going to try to be a little bit more succinct <laughs> um, and not go for two hours. Um, also, some quick announcements. Um, we, if in the description box, there's a link to our um, store where we are actually selling Merch. merchandise. So mm -hmm. if you guys didn't know, you'll see we'll have some merchandise with Rose to Forever or something else on it and a portion of the proceeds from whatever it was. It's not <laughs> this shirt. But it's not like, this one, but it's a shirt with, you know, Rose to Forever. Yeah, so we have still. like a uh, different type of merchandise. And so um, whatever you buy, a portion of your proceeds will go to benefit an organization called Matthew 25 Ministries. Um, and Matthew 25 Ministries is highly rated on Char Charity Navigator. Um, so it's a awesome charity doing really good things. So if you read Matt, Matthew 25, they talk about feeding the hunger, clothing, you know, just providing. And so um, a portion of the proceeds from if you guys buy any merchandise from our store will go to benefit that organization. So we just chose them because of their mission mm -hmm. and vision. So we think that's mm -hmm. um, exciting. All right. Kamisha is here. Hi, hey. Kamisha. Welcome. So excited you're joining us uh, tonight. Um, so Let's get right into it because there's a lot to go over. Um, guys, if we don't go through like line by line, <laughs> it's because there's just so much. And, you know, uh, Come to Christ loves this part of Revelation because this is, you know, where it's, it, 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 it's, it's all good, but it's like it's going, really, it's going down. <laughs> it goes all the way down. It gets really good. <laughs> All right, so uh, Kyle's going to pray us in, and then we're just going to get started with our first question. All right, everyone, let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for the blessing of this day. Thank you for your guidance, Rosie, love, and protection. And we thank you for the opportunity to come to you in prayer and the power of prayer. We thank you for your love. We thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us and rise again so that through faith in him, we might be saved. Lord, 
you knew that we would need salvation because of our nature. We just thank you so much for loving us in spite of our nature um, and sending salvation to us. God, as we open your word today, we pray you will open our hearts and our minds to receive your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. May you receive the glory, honor, and praise, and may you open our eyes and our ears to see and hear what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. So let's get right into it with our questions. I have them up on my phone. I should have written them out today, but yeah, uh, didn't happen. So, um, Kyle is being bad. Yeah, right. Mm. So, um, Kyle's going to be responsible for question number one. So, you guys know how we do. You're one of our returning regulars. We just kind of alternate uh, the questions. So, uh, question number one is Kyle, which is uh, who is the woman in verse one and what does she represent? Explain any symbolism. All right. So, we're going to jump right into it, guys. Again, glad to have you here. Excited. I'm um, looking forward to digging into the word. So who's the woman? Who is this woman that's being spoken about in Revelation 12? So um, upon my study, I found out that this woman is actually the nation of Israel. So why is it the nation of Israel, God's chosen people? Well, what happened? So things that allowed me to come to this conclusion is that, you know, Israel is where um, Jesus did a lot of his ministry. Um, also, as we go further down, it's going to be, well, I won't jump into it, but we'll reveal who the child is. And I kind of gave it away already. But, um, you know, the child being birthed from the, na from, the, from, the, from the woman who is the nation of Israel kind of speaks to where he's from and also the ministry that was done there. Um, but again, the reason I say the woman is um, the nation of Israel is because when we look in the Bible, um, a lot of the times when, a wo when, when the Bible refers to a woman, it's speaking about a system of beliefs or practices that influence people. Now, I say that because if we look at Ephesians 5, 25 and through 26, um, we look at a system of um, beliefs and practices, which could be considered the church as well. Um, we look at it says, husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. So he's referring to the church as a woman. We also look at Ezekiel 6, 1 through 2, um, where um, the Bible is talking about God's love for Jerusalem. But at the same time, he's speaking about their harlotry as well. Um, it says, again, the word of God came to me. This is Ezekiel speaking, saying, son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Um, as we go further down that chapter, it starts to speak about harlotry and, you know, how she gave herself over, how Jesus, act oh God, I'm sorry, how God. Um, clothed her in his beauty, and she was just so beautiful to him because of the blessings and her beauty. But then she began to kind of practice harlotry because she began to use her beauty and, in a sense, prostitute herself to other gods, things like that. So, again, looking at religious systems or, you know, systems of beliefs that are being referred to as women. Um, now, same thing like a sorry to interview, mm -hmm. but like with the story of Hosea and Gomer, another example, right? Where it, you know God was talking to Israel in that situation, right? Because mm -hmm. they're prostituting themselves, and mm -hmm. you know, in that situation, Jesus kept going back to get them. I digress, mm -hmm. but that's a view, <laughs> like that's the story. If you want to think about um, how much God loves you, and um, you know, that He will come back for you each time. Uh, that's a really awesome one. Go ahead, Kyle. I'm sorry about that. Hey, listen, but no, you just kind of triggered something for me as you were saying that. Listen, interrupt me when is that good? It's all right. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. So, um, my second answer to the other part of that, um, of that question, what was the second part? Sweetheart, just so I can read for context. So it just said, "What does she represent?" and explain any symbolism. Okay. So again, she represents the nation of Israel, um, and it says that the woman was clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Now, though, so, so let's jump into each individual one. The sun represents, um, sorry, the sun represents Jacob. Um, the moon represents Rachel, Jacob's wife. And the 12 tribes represent the, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes of Israel. So I just kind of gave it away there. But um, if you look in Genesis 37 verses nine through 10, it actually breaks this down for you a little bit. And I thought it was really interesting because it actually spoke directly to um, what it actually represented. So this is, 
um, Daniel. So where it has it that it says, then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed another dream. At this time, the sun, also in this chapter, the moon and the 11 stars bowed down to me. Then he told his father and his brothers and his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? There it's telling you right there. The 12, I'm sorry, the 11, and, and note that it also said here, the 11 stars, the 11 stars. So where's the 12th one? He's the 12th one. Joseph yeah. is the 12th one right there. So it right there tells you that there's a star. So if you really look at it, there's a star missing, which is the one who's speaking about the other 11 stars worshiping him. Thus, the 12 stars. I'm sorry, just, thus the 12 tribes of Israel. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a, that's a little tongue-tied, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you, Kyle. Um, nice job with explaining that. Um, Sharon Duncan here said, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath, Sharon. Uh, Come to Christ said, her interpretation, the woman is Israel. Jacob, he had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes. Jesus was from the head tribe, Judah, and he had 12 disciples. 12 represents power and authority and completion alike so again it seems like um you and come to christ were on similar uh wavelength here uh come to christ the number seven same will be uh same will but used for different reason come to christ also says i agree he talked about how israel fornicated by going after other gods that other nations worshipped etc they were not supposed to follow after their ways and her husband had similar interpretation to her so um she was just saying you know, nice job, Kyle. It seems like you guys had the same interpretation when it comes to question one. And so if you're tuning in with us um, and, you know, you have any thoughts or feedback about this particular chapter, please put those in the uh, comment box and we'll share them with everyone else who's also tuning in. So um, the questions, as you guys know, are always up by uh, Thursday at the latest so that way you guys can after reading through the chapter go through and prepare some answers so that we can dialogue because we really like dialoguing with you guys <laughs> about this all right so we're going to jump into question number two so as kyle's getting ready to read question number two if you still have any comments on question one please feel free to stick that in the chat box all right kyle so question number two question number two is what is the i'm sorry who is the dragon in verse three and what does he represent? Explain any symbolism. What important details does verse four tell us about the dragon? All right. So, um, geez, this is going to be uh, an interesting one. Guys, you know, I, I like write Dig lots in. of notes. Oh, you guys won't. I don't think no you guys one's going to see that. You won't be able to see that. But it's like I have front and back notes um, for <laughs> when I went through this. And um, I spent quite a bit of time. Um, working on that today. So I think Kyle is, oh, uh oh, I don't know what he's doing. He's uh, <laughs> moving. Stuff. He's probably going to go grab some water. But while he's doing that, um, I will tell you who um, the dragon is and what I have. So I have that the dragon is Satan. And honestly, verse nine kind of confirms that for us. Uh, so, you know, it's in verse nine. It says the great dragon will hurl down that ancient uh, serpent called the devil, Satan, who leads the whole world astray. So again, that was right there in verse nine for you. So even though um, we're in verse three, if you were to move down um, just a few verses, it confirmed for you exactly who the dragon was. And so the dragon is Satan. So that was my interpretation. Um, what does he represent? Um, and any important details? And what does verse four tell us? So I'm just going to go through and um, break down the different description. So um, one of the things I noticed was when you were reading this verse, it said um, the sign appeared in heaven. So what this said to me was that, you know, this was not an actual literal dragon. It was a representation. Um, the fact that the dragon was red, when we think of the color red, we generally think, you know, blood, you know, uh, fire. So in terms of like symbolism. And then if you were to read John 8, 44, it tells us that the devil was a murderer from the beginning not holding to the truth for there is no truth in him. He is the father of lies. So when you're thinking about the person who is covered in blood and the red representing blood, and you're looking at this verse, it's telling you that that's who um, the dragon is. And, you know, the fact that he's red. Did you have a point to that? 
Um, yeah, you actually just said it like three times, actually. So if we look at, um, Re sorry, guys, if we look at Revelation 6, 4, um, I'll actually read it for you. And it breaks it down. Something that she just said. It actually talks about one of the horsemen. It says another horseman, another horse, fiery red went out and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth that the people should kill one another. And there was given to him a great sword. So when we think about red in this situation, we talk about, as my wife said, bloodshed, but it's also been spoken about already in um, Revelation 6, 4, where it talks about the fiery red horseman who, you know, represented killing and shed blood. So it's just a really important point to keep in mind about that red and bloodshed. Right. Yeah. So uh, as you can see, as we read through Revelations, a lot of these uh, different um, books, they tie together as one whole story. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll say if you look in Revelation 20 or Revelation 5, you know, so we may go ahead or we may go um, backwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, something else it said it had seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns. But if you guys remember when we talked about crowns earlier, you know, these were not true crowns. And so uh, this creature is actually feigning royalty because he has no real authority. We already know who has all authority. Um, and so we can assume that, you know, this is a not a real crown as the crown that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wears. Also, with the seven heads um, and the uh, ten horns, we can assume that this dragon was very powerful because uh, think about that, right? Um, and also, if you look at some parallel references to this, um, when you read in Daniel chapter 7, starting at verse 7. So if you're reading the vision in Daniel, this actually parallels really nicely with what we're reading in this chapter. But in Daniel 7, we read about, you know, the fourth beast, which also had the ten horns. And so as you read through Daniel 7 and 8, we will see that this is a depiction of Satan's rule over certain kingdoms. And so I think, you know, that as you're looking through that and you go back through Daniel, you can see how these two tie together. So I think it's really good to read Revelation along with Daniel at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what are some important details about um, the dragon in verse four? So uh, again, I'm just going to break this down as well. Uh, I said the tail swept one third of the stars out of the sky mm. and flung them to earth. One third. So when Satan was cast out of heaven during his rebellion, rebellion, remember that some of the angels were also cast out with him. And you can read about this in you know, Isaiah 14, uh, verse 12. And also, I really like what it says in um, 2 Peter 2, verse 4, because it says, For if God did not spare the angels when they sin, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for the judgment. So again, we know that, you know, these uh, one third stars that went with the tail um, most likely could represent the angels that were cast out with um, uh, Satan. Also, it said the dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment he was born. And so, you know, guys, I, I, again, there's so many different things you can take from these uh, passages as you're reading them. But if you guys were to remember the story of Herod, right? Mm. Um and so he desired to kill the Messiah. Um, and so, again, you can read all about this in uh, the book of Matthew. But if you remember, guys, when uh, Jesus was born and the wise men, um, they actually did not. They were supposed to have, you know, every, um, Herod had said, you know, they wanted, he wanted to worship and mm -hmm. see worship. The, mm -hmm. <laughs> the newborn king. Right. But uh, truthfully, he did not want to do that. And so the wise men were smart enough to they were wise you know, enough <laughs> they were wise enough <laughs> to get Jesus out of there right and so what happened was um, Herod sent for all of the male children under the age of 2 to be killed and so when you're thinking about this story and so you know this child is you know and I don't want to jump ahead into Kyle's but obviously we're saying this woman is representing Israel and the child is the Messiah so again you can see how this kind of coincides with the story of Herod and so that's what I got out of the just reading 3 and 4 I don't know if you have anything extra to add there uh, well, first of all, thank you for the wonderful points you did make. Appreciate that. Um, so what I noticed, and you made a mention of it already, but I'll just kind of dig a little deeper into the mm -hmm. tail. Um, also, when it talks about his tail, um, you know, taking a third of the angels that are, you know, taking the angels out of heaven, um, 
when you actually look at what it says, it says it drew them out of heaven, which is to drag or be pulled by force. Now, um, I feel like that's important simply because, you know, when we think about force, it doesn't necessarily have to be physical. It could be mental, spiritual, emotional. It could be by deception, which is, I believe, how Satan got his armies the same way he gets his armies today. He deceives us. He deceives people to try to get them on his side, making them promises, you know, because in this situation, he was talking about being like the most high. He said, yeah, I'm going to be like God. He probably said something like, you'll rule under me or who knows what he said. But either way, the force he used didn't necessarily have to be physical. It could be, you know, deceptive force. Um, so that's in one thing. Also, when it talks about the tail, it's something that's to, um, when we look at Revelation 9, 10, and 19, actually, well, actually 10, I broke it down to 19. Um, it actually talks about um, the scorpions and the locusts, I'm sorry, the locusts and how their tails did harm. You know, it says, you know, their power is in the mouth and their tails, for their tails are like serpents, something like Satan, um, having heads and with them they do harm. Now, it also says uh, they had tails like scorpions and there were, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men for five months. But again, the power, the, it seems like the tails have to do with some type of harm. And in this situation, when it comes to Satan, the harm done was taking heavenly hosts out of their earth, out of their, out of their place, out of their, earth, out of their heavenly place. So that was harm there. Um, another thing is when we actually dig into the crowns, right? We look at the crowns that these that the drag that these different horns were wearing or whatever. It talks about the type of crown. So, um, in the actually in the in the New King James Version, which is the one I'm going to be reading from, it actually talk it specifically mentions a type of crown. So, if you look here, well, if you read here, what it will say is another sign appeared: the fiery dragon, ten horns, and and seven diadems on his head. So, diadems are a type of crown. There's, there's a couple of types. There's, um, if you're looking at the Greek, it's Stephanos, which is the crown of victory. And then you have diadema, which is an extension of, a, of diadem. It's actually a crown that you win through like championships, Olympic goals, like some type of activity that you're doing. Um, I brought that up because in Isaiah 62, verse three, it says, you shall also be a crown of glory in the, in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. So again, it speaks to what that represents and it speaks to, you know, the power of this crown. So that's one thing I wanted to mention as well. All right. So let's go. We have lots of comments Ooh, in the chat yes, box. Yes, so um, going back to uh, question one, Kyle, thank you so much for those points. Uh, Zama said, I agree with Kyle. The woman represents Israel and their instances in the Bible where this reference is made, including Jeremiah 3, verse 20. I love when you guys bring Bible verses. So these are verses for you guys to always go back and refer to. Come to Christ says, of course, the dragon is the devil, Satan. He represents our adversary, the great old serpent, the deceiver, traitor that only comes to kill, steal, destroy, and accuse the brethren. Amen. Mm -hmm. He struck a third of the stars, angel of God, like it states in Genesis um, chapter 6, the fallen angels, and him fell from heaven after sin against mankind and nature God created. Um, Come to Christ also says he tried to cause destruction and confusion amongst what God created to be for a different purpose. Uh, Malachi says it was seven heads and ten horns, which means it may have something to do with NATO and the world, new world order, uh, one world government. He's the ruler of the world. Uh, Zama said, yes, the word sign indicates that it's a representation, not a literal dragon. Um, come to Christ. Jeez, we have a lot of comments. They love this. Uh, come to Christ says he wanted to devour our Lord and Savior and was angry because he knew he would save us if he didn't eat him. He knew <laughs> who he was and what he would accomplish. Um, come to Christ said, Herod, yes, Matthew 2. She had the same interpretations that I did. Um, they did that too in Egypt, killing the newborn boys. Uh, Zama says the dragon represents a character of the one that this passage is talking about in that verse. In this case, that person is Satan. When I think of a dragon, I think powerful and scary. Um, and the fact that it has several heads indicates it has immense strength and power. Amen, uh, Zama, with those points and come to Christ as well. And Donovan says also the tale could be the lies of Satan. Isaiah 9.15 
and the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tale. So Donovan, Ooh, another nice. really good point. So you guys, I can tell you guys really, um, you know, took a deep dive into Revelation 12 this week and you guys came with the answer. So we Amen. are loving it. Love awesome, that. awesome, awesome. Um, did you have one final point before we move on to um, number three? No, I didn't. That was everything. Okay. You said you had something else, I thought, with the crowns, the diadems. and. Well, we spoke about those already. Well, I mean, so for me, so, well, something I, I've noticed is that um, it looks like the difference between these crowns, like I said, you know, Stephanos is a crown of victory. Um, and then the diadema is a crown that is given or that is representative of one who has conquered like the uh, crown that was worn by, I believe it was one of the horsemen um, as well. I believe mm -hmm. it was. Yeah, one of the horsemen, they wore a crown. Actually, <laughs> I think it was the exact same one, the fiery red, the, well, the, the first, the first, the, the first, yeah, it was one before that. But either way, um, when I think about these crowns, I think about what needs to be done to acquire them. Um, and when we look at the word, Jesus is actually wearing a crown as well, but he's wearing the victor's crown because he doesn't have to fight any more battles because he already won the victory, which is why he wears the victor's crown. Now, this other crown is won by conquerors. Now, conquerors are known for their constant conquering. What that means is that they have to continue producing in order to maintain the crown. So when you look at the difference between how you acquire the crowns, you can look at it and see who's already won. And if you see in this chapter or in these chapters, individuals who are wearing the diadema crown where they have to constantly conquer, don't be afraid of them. Don't worry about them because we serve a God who won, who has the crown of victory, meaning that no matter how many battles are fought, he's already the victor of them all. Amen. Amen. And come to Christ said, let's be the head and not the, not tail. the tail. <laughs> well, it does say Amen. that in the Bible, right? You will be the head and not the tail. So uh, good point there. Come to Christ. Amen. All right. Let's move on to question number three. You guys are killing it out there. So thank you for these awesome commentary. Um, who do you think the male child is in verse? Yeah. So the male child is Jesus. Um, Simply because we look at the fact that he was birthed out of the nation of Israel. Again, that's a point, that's a clue right there. Um, we look at verse 12. I'm sorry, we look at chapter Revelation 12, verse 5, where it says, She bore a male child who was the rule, who was who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Now, obviously in Matthew, I believe it talks about how. God in front of his disciples was called up. I'm sorry, Jesus was called up to God in front of his disciples. So that's another clue there. If you just want to tie clues together. Also, in Revelation, in Revelation 9, well, sorry guys, I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but in Revelation 19, verse 13 through 15, it actually talks about, and his name was called the Word of God, and his and the armies of heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule them with an with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of fierceness and wrath of the almighty God. That's another clue there. As you can see, I had a lot of clues, guys. So it kind of broke it down multiple ways. Um, in Revelation 2, uh, verses 26 through 27, it says, and this is Jesus speaking, so this is speaking to the power that he has that he's giving to his people who endure and overcome. It says, and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, I will give him power over what? The nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall dash to pieces like the potter's vessel. And the last, the last um, clue that I have, God, just to kind of tie it all together, is actually in the book of Psalms, verse two, I'm sorry, chapter two, verse nine. And what it says is, um, you shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now I read, that was a lot to read, but I read it all because each of these chapters and each of these verses interpret themselves and speak to the identity of who this child is based on what the child is meant to do. So I wanted to share that just to kind of give you a solid backstory on who the child is. Um, I think mostly, mostly that was all of it for that one, but um, just wanted to give you guys a breakdown so that you get an understanding. 
Amen, um, Kyle. And Mo M said, Amen, Kyle. That's a great point. As Christians, let's remember that Christ has already won the battle. Yes, he has. So you don't have to fight. Um, the battle is not yours. Um, mm -hmm. Come to Christ said, of course, the male child is Christ born from the one, the head tribes of the 12 tribes of Israel. He's the lion of Judah. Mm -hmm. He rules with a rod of iron, like it says in Revelation 2, 27. So it looks like Come to Christ also used the same verses you did, Kyle, because she also mentioned, and so did Zama, uh, mm -hmm. Psalm 2, uh, 7 to 9, God told David he was his son and that he would break the enemies with a rod of iron and dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. So David was also a king over Israel. So again, you come to Christ, use the same verse there as well. And Zama says it refers to the Messiah, which is Jesus in Psalm 2.9. Um, and Malachi said the same thing in terms of interpretation. So you guys are all on the same page, page there as well. Amen. Um, and come to Christ also mentioned that he's compared to Christ a lot in the Bible, very similar. They're both born in Bethlehem and are from the tribe of Judah. So um, good job, guys, with all coming to this same conclusion about who the child is. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. So uh, moving on to question four, actually. So mm -hmm. question four reads that um, reads, explain the significance of the event that took place in verse six. Where have we seen this before and what does it mean? All right. So as usual, Kyle, with the uh, multiple questions. Oh, jeez, um, me, you mean me? Uh, like these two. Kyle, uh, Kyle was responsible for this week's Bible study, the reading, and putting the questions together. And guys, when I tell you that his paper, he has like multiple pieces of paper with like so many notes. Front and back, by the way. Yeah, he. Yeah, so he's been like doing this since like Saturday. Since last Saturday, he's been working on this. So. That's right. Um, <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Friday. Yes, Friday. I said the day before Saturday. So, okay. you know. <laughs> so he has lots of notes. So I'm sure he probably has like some feedback on this question as well. Um, so one of the things that I noticed, you guys know, I like to highlight little things in the passage. So uh, in verse six, it said the woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days, approximately three and a half years. And you guys remember, we've seen this um three and a half years before and the 1260 days that we talked about this just last week. So um, when I saw this, like some of this, so I circled a few things I circled. Uh, first thing I circled was wilderness, right? And so it made me think of the Israelites when they were in the wilderness and God not only provided for them, but he also protected them. So he took care of them, right? So if you read the prophecy in Daniel 9, um, you know, or and also in Matthew 24, um, where God takes care of, you know, where he talks about hiding his people. And so if you were to look at Matthew um, 24, specifically in verses 15 to 21, again, this is where it's talking about God, you know, hiding his people. And so when I thought of this idea of the wilderness, I was like, OK, it's a place where God is like protecting and sheltering his people as well. And then I also circled a place prepared by God. And so, you know, um, this is to me reminds me of the promise that Jesus spoke to his disciples um, in John 14, uh, verse two through three, right? Where it says, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you? Um, would I have told, told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. So again, this was telling me that God has, excuse me, God has a plan for his people, not only here on earth, but also in heaven. And so when we're looking at all of these different numbers and the symbols they represent, we saw this just last week when we were talking about Revelation 11. And so, you know, that God is going to protect and shelter his people. Um, and so those were some of the things that I saw as I read this particular verse. Kyle, I know you have some points you wanted to add as well. Um, not much, but I mean, what you said made a lot, was pretty much what it was, like how the, the fact that um, God fed um, his church while they were there. And I feel like... Um, it's a very interesting, it's very interesting when God talks about feeding, you, you know, obviously maybe physical, but at the same time, that's spiritual food, because with all the things going on in the world, the enemy destroying the world, a lot of the people, you know, going around destroying different things, um, there's going to be a lot of death and, death and destruction. Um, you know, God refers to himself as the word of life. So when there's destruction going on, he's going to feed us with his word, which is life. And a lot of times when we have enough, and, and I feel like that's important because we have a lot of things going on around us 
it's sometimes easy to get caught up in what's going on around us. So we begin to see only those things, which would, in this situation would represent death. But God wants to remind us that even with everything going on, as long as he's still in control and as long as he's with us, he will give us what we need to stay focused on what's important, regardless of where we are. Amen. Um, Come to Christ said we saw it a lot with Israel going in the wilderness where God was leading them out to save them from their enemies. And Jesus went into the wilderness. Yes, he did. And mm -hmm. others in the Bible went through that as well. Uh, Zama said, I got the longest questions this time. I know Zama, right? <laughs> um, Come to Christ said uh, season phase in their lives. And then God leads them out to bring them closer to him. Yes. Come to Christ. I really time to take our little commercial break. We're not leaving, you know, guys, but our commercial break to, to that point that you're saying, um, come to Christ about that. You know, sometimes when you're going through the wilderness, it's because God is leading you to somewhere better. He's leading you to a promised land, right? That God has is leading you to the purpose, right? There is something, there is a lesson to be learned in the wilderness. There is purpose in your pain type of thing. So I really like that point that you had to make there come to Christ. And I think Kyle maybe wants to make a point before I continue with the commentary. No, it just, it's just when you were talking about the wilderness and how God feeds his people and the fact that um, the Israelites had to go through it for 40 years. That was 40 years of spiritual nourishment. That was 40 years of spiritual maturity. That was 40 years of making mistakes, correcting the mistakes, making more mistakes, correcting the mistakes. And a lot of the times that's what we go through. We may go through a wilderness and we may feel like God's not answering. But instead of God not answering, what God is doing is preparing us for the answer we asked him for. And we have to not look at the lack of emotion as God not paying attention to us, but as God trying to do what he needs to do in order to fuel us with what we need. Because maybe the amount of time that, we, that we're waiting, it, re it represents the amount of maturity, the amount of experience, the amount of faith that we need in order to truly be able to handle the thing that we're asking God for. But if we don't go through the wilderness and we get to the promised land, we're going to jack it up because we're not going to be ready for what we ask for. Because a lot of times we ask for great things, but we haven't had great experience. We haven't had great faith. We may not have, you know, whatever we need to handle it. So we have to just be patient and just continue to follow God's lead. And as he's and as we're following him, He's going to continue nourishing us, providing for us, giving us what we need so that when he does bring us to that promised land, we will be ready to take full advantage of it and use it for his glory. Amen. And so if anyone is watching us tonight and you're going through a situation where you are, you know, feeling like you're experiencing a lot of pain, remember that there is a purpose. Um, nothing you've been through in this life has ever been wasted. God wants to use that pain for you maybe to testify to others and to help others along the way. Um, because I mean, if you think about your own life story and some of the things that, you know, may have been really hurtful to you are the things that maybe you have been, um, you know, that God has designed for you to use to bless somebody else. So just, you know, um, just keep trusting him and having faith. Uh, Come to Christ. You mentioned a couple of verses as well. Uh, for us to check out. Um, she says, Malachi says, it sounds like when Israel went to the promised land, but even when they were settled, they were protected from extinction. Um, Come to Christ also says, amen. I've seen it right when you want to quit. Your breakthrough is very near. Yes, that's true, right? You're like, you know, at the minute you stopped, like it was almost there. So don't ever give up. Don't ever count out God, right? Just trust in him. Hold on to him. Don't let uh, your problems be bigger than your God. Um, Come to Christ said, amen. She needed this word. Uh, Mo says, God chastises those he loves. Yes, he uh, though he chasteneth those whom he loves, right? That's the verse, something like that. <laughs> something um, like that. <laughs> Sharon says, amen. Good perspective on waiting. Uh, Donovan says, amen. Also, 1 Kings 17, 9 through 16, Elijah the witness was fleeing from Jezebel the harlot and met a woman with a son who dies and is resurrected, is blessed with oil so she can eat in the three-year drought. Oh, yes, that's a really good yeah. uh, story as well, where, you know, they're like the last little bit of oil, and he's like, yeah, make me something to eat. And they're like, what the fuck? Like, like, <laughs> Are you serious? Like, 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 Donovan, you. thank you for bringing up that story. Awesome story. Uh, Zama says, love that. So many times the word wilderness has a negative connotation, but I like the outlook that Kyle 
the out, that outlook Kyle, that is training ground so that we should not fear, but instead embrace. Yes, embrace mm-hmm. the wilderness. I know it's hard, though. Like, guys, if we're being real, like when you're in the wilderness, you're not really trying to hear about embracing the wilderness. Right. You mm-hmm. want to you want the good stuff now. <laughs> yeah, when we think about wilderness. Sorry, could you? Uh, could no, no, go ahead. <laughs> we think about wilderness. We think about stagnation. We think it's a place where we're just sitting. You know what I mean? We think about we're just in this place, not moving, and God's just kind of stationary. But think about this. If you have a car and you don't take time to go to the gas station, but you just keep driving, guess what's going to happen? You're going around the gas. You're going to be stuck in a place um, without the opportunity to be fueled. But when you take the, when you know you're running low on gas, and I'll get to the point of the gas, but when you run low on gas and you go to the gas station, Guess what you're doing? You're sitting there. You're stationary. You're not moving. But guess what's happening? Your vehicle's being fueled so that when it is time to move, it can keep going. So think about it that way, that sometimes the wilderness is a place for God to fuel us so that when he does, when it is time for us to move, we can keep going versus starting and stopping and never actually reaching the promise. Amen. Um, A few more comments in here. Um, come to Christ says, got to give a lot of pressure to make a great diamond. That is true. Um, Mo says, James 1, 2 through 4, remind us, yes, count it uh, all joy when we experience a test yes. of our faith that uh, produces patience and it's perfect work. Mm. Yes, we definitely had um, a Bible study about um, James, the book of James of four. Um, so I, it's in our Bible study playlist where we talked about, you know, how to do a soap note. And we did an entire soap note on James one. And that was something that we went through in depth. So um, if you haven't seen our other Bible study, we have an entire Bible study playlist. Uh, Come to Christ says, I love it when we Bible study the word of God. It's awesome. Uh, Donovan said, give us leaks. <laughs> Zama says, LOL. <laughs> yes, it is hard. Zama, yes. I, I know that I've been there. And like, the truth is we have to be honest with us. You know, we have to be honest that it's not always easy to be in the wilderness. Uh, Come to Christ says, yes, but it brings us to another level of faith and patience for sure. Definitely. Uh, Donovan says, we're the flesh pots of Egypt. The contemptible bread of mercy. <laughs> All right, Donovan, thank you. Like, I mean, you guys really are um, doing an awesome job tonight with, you know, um, going through these questions with us. All right. So I think we are now on question number five, and that's Kyle's question. So mm-hmm. Kyle, explain the significance of the events that took place in verse 7 through 12 when you believe who do you believe michael is and why before you go there we had another comment from tt tt welcome she might have been here but she's saying something now she said the story of joseph shows god's plan even though we might not understand at the time what we're going through amen yes that is a fantastic story all that he went through while he sat there um, in jail, right, uh, for something he didn't do. But mm. again, it was all a part of the greater plan. So, TT, thank you for bringing up that point. All right, Kyle. So, question five the significance of the events that took place in verses seven through 12, and who do you believe Michael is and why? All right. So, I'm going to go through seven through nine first, and then we'll break down 10 and 12. I'm mean, sorry, 10 through 12. So, um, in verses seven through nine, basically, Satan and his angels fought against Michael and his angels. Um, I want to read a particular point where it says, but they, this is verse eight. It says, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. Um, and the serpent of old, the devil was cast down to earth. Now, um, why is this important guys? What's the relevance What's the significance here? Um, it's significant because not only does Satan and his angels lose the battle, but they, lost their place in heaven. And why did they lose their place in heaven? Um, Because of sin, because of pride, Satan's pride and his desire to be like the most high. And well, let me just say this. I'm going to break this down to two things. They lost their place in heaven because of sin and I'm sorry, pride and deception, which are two sins. I'm sorry. Well, pride is, is, is a sin, but deception is, you know, obviously what the devil does. He deceives people, but They lost their place because of pride and deception. Satan wanted to be like the most high, so he sought to overtake him. He sought sought to exalt himself above God. But God is the highest. No one can be exalted above him because he is master. And deception, because one-third of the angels listen to the lie or let the lie take them out, 
Um, or in a sense, they, again, who knows exactly what the situation is, but bottom line, their devotion to God was not strong enough. So whatever happened, they were swayed to follow the devil because maybe there were some underlying desires that were in their minds. Again, I don't know. This is just my speculation. Um, it could have been underlying desires. Maybe they were tired of being under God's rule. And they said, you know what? Let's go listen to them. Let's go listen to Satan. So maybe it could have been one of those reasons. But bottom line is when I think about this and how pride and deception took, you know, made Satan and his angels lose their place in heaven. It makes me think about us. And how the same thing could happen to us if we give ourselves over to pride or allow ourselves to be deceived by not humbling ourselves and staying in God's word. Because we can give ourselves over to pride if we don't give God the glory and we don't humble ourselves under his righteous hand. And we could also be deceived if we don't stay in his word and stay to show ourselves approved. So we can fall under the same situation that the angels and the devil um, you know, fell into if we don't ourselves stay connected to God and continue reading his word. Um, that's one thing. Now, when it comes to verse 10 through 12, um, the thing, like what it mentions in verse 10, it says, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of God, I'm sorry, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accused of our brethren who accused them, um, before the Lord day and night has been cast down. Um, it goes into more detail. They love the lamb and, um, their testimony. But what I found interesting is that it says salvation um, it says salvation, strength, and the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ come only after Satan was taken out, only after Satan and his angels left. Um, I was his present, but what that tells me is that um, these things obviously exist, but it's very hard for these things to be present in Satan's presence. Whenever there is sin, you know, we understand that, you know, that is something that God hates. God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. So when we're sinning, we're not under salvation. We're not receiving salvation. We're actually receiving the opposite of all those things. If we're not receiving salvation, we're receiving damnation. Um, if we're not receiving strength, we're receiving weakness. If we're not in the kingdom of God, we're in the kingdom of this world, which is Satan's kingdom. Or if the power of Christ is not here, then it's the power of evil that's operating. So when I look at that and it said that it came after Satan was gone, it showed them that if he's present, there's probably going to be the total opposite. So we have to, we have to be willing to, you know, to eject anything that does not let God out of our lives so that not only can we receive, well, through not only can we receive his salvation, but that we can walk righteously through the blood of Jesus, um, through the salvation that has been given to us through, you know, the Christ's sacrifice on the cross. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kyle. Um, I, you know, as you were talking about pride, like my mind automatically went to Proverbs 16, uh, verse 18, where it says, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. And like when you think about, you know, the fact that the Satan and his angels are fallen. And I was just like, so as you were talking about that, this was the, the verse that really popped into my head here. Um, some comments. Um, in the chat box, come to Christ says, Michael is an archangel of God. Him and the other archangels and other angels are fighting against Satan and the other fallen angels. They had no more authority rights in heaven because they used to. Uh, Ingrid says, hi, guys. Glad I can make it. Ingrid, we're so happy that you could join us for Bible study. I know that she normally works late. So thank you for joining us, Ingrid. We're so excited you're here. Um, and then you can always uh, catch the beginning if you want to go back later as well. Come to Christ says, work for God until they disobeyed him, his words and commands. Satan lost and didn't win against Michael and his angels course and got even angrier because of this and deceived the world, trying to lead as many people astray from God as possible. Mm -hmm. Donovan says, amen. Let no man take your crown. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ. Did mm -hmm. you want to say something else before I uh, kept going with mm -hmm. these chats? Right. I want to take a break from this, from my answer, because I know it was a little long. So I want to give everybody a chance to read, but yes. Um, verse 11 and 12, where it talks about, um, they overcame by the blood of the lamb and their, and, and their testimony. Um, they overcame because of what Jesus did. We got that. Their belief in Jesus and what he did and their desire to die for their beliefs. And that's a big thing. We have to, you know, be will because it said they didn't um, love their lives to the death. So we have to be willing to lay down our lives for our belief because when we lay down our lives for our belief, we will rise in Jesus' glory. Um, 
also it talks about, you know, when Satan was cast down, woe to the inhabitants of the earth. <laughs> we know what a woe represents. So woe to the inhabitants of the earth um, because danger left heaven and came to earth. Um, and that was a huge thing that we have to really keep in mind as well. And as a result, because Satan was cast down, it also says that um, um, in verse 12, it says, for the devil has come down to, down to you, you know, us earthlings, <laughs> having great wrath because he knows that his time is short. So what Satan is doing, he is intensifying the persecution because he wants to take as many people down. It, well, you ever heard the phrase misery loves company? Well, Satan is miserable. OK, he's upset that his plan to be above God failed to the point where he's even lower than he was before. So, you know, he's like ready to really take his anger out on the one who harmed him or the one who he was trying to overthrow, but that ended up overthrowing him. Um, so, you know, he's going to intensify that persecution and he's going to stop at nothing to take as many of Christ's children with him as he can through deception and whatever else he can use. Because again, misery loves company. Um, and just going into the Michael thing, which was already answered, but um, yes, according to Jude 1, 9, Michael is the archangel who actually contended with Satan over Moses' body, actually. So when Moses died, you know, it doesn't talk about it anywhere else in the Bible, but it does here in Jude 1, verse 9, talk about, I'm sorry, Michael contending with Satan over Moses' body. It doesn't really speak about why or, you know, how this came about, but we do see that um, Michael does, there's, Michael contends with Satan more than once. So they, they've met before. And this time he just knocks him out of heaven and still beats him. So <laughs> just something to keep in mind. All right. Awesome. Um, Come to Christ says he was cast down to earth and his angels. So even though they were all created by God to do his will and purpose, when Satan and the other fallen angels rebelled against God, they became his minions. Jesus is our salvation, our strength, and has taken the rightful place and the power of his son, the one he sent down on earth to die for us. Uh, amen. Really good point there. Um, also referring to Psalm 93, 1 and Psalm 104, verse 1. Um, Mo says she sees a pattern in the Bible of where God has a plan or structure of how things should go. He writes his law and word, yet we choose to rewrite and disobey him because of our pride and selfishness. Mo, mm -hmm. that is such a good point. Yes, it's I like literally that right there. I think, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's just saying some amazing things, now, but I just think it's so true. Like we try to like do things our own way and that's where we get in trouble. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. It doesn't say we're going to direct our own path or we're going to tell God where we want to go and then he lead the way based on what, based on our GPS or based on our trajectory. It says he knows the way. Matter of fact, it says he is the way, the truth, and the life. So if we follow him, we're going to be led in the right path because he is the truth. And he, he's not a man that he should lie. Right, because we already know Satan is the father of lies. Exactly, um, liar. <laughs> come to Christ said the saints, um, of course, overcame Satan anyways by the blood of the lamb they had on them because they had Christ and by their testimony using the word of God. They love God so much. Oh, my goodness. There's so much <laughs> in the chat box. They love God so much enough to die for him and be persecuted for him like he did for us and be in glory with him and the father. And so several verses. Guys, tonight's chat box is on fire. Phil is Phil. Yeah, there are so many great Bible verses that you guys are sharing that were some of the very same Bible verses that we refer to as well. So thank you guys um, just for being so diligent in studying the word this week. Uh, Malachi said, I question when this occurred, how does this work if the heavenly beings don't experience time the same way? Michael's an archangel and in Daniel 10, we see that he's not the only archangel. Interesting point of Malachi. Um, Donovan said Satan made war with his traffic or peddling lies. Ezekiel 28, 15, um, in 16, but God, um, but Michael fights lies with the word of God, Jude 1, 9. So those were the same verses you mentioned. So you and Donovan were on the same point here. Yes, the word of God is powerful, sharper than a two-edged sword, right? Um, Zama says, I agree with Paul. He's furious and knows that the only way he can hurt God is by misleading his children, causing them to deny God and cause death to come up on them. Yes, guys, do not fall victim to his lies and his trap. Um, come to Christ as I agree with that. Yes, I remember that story. He said, Satan, I rebuke thee. 
Um, TT says, amen. And Zama says, yes, amen. Seek he first, because guess what? Without him, we're lost. Absolutely. That's one of Kyle's favorite Bible verses, Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first, Probably the kingdom favorite. of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be, be added, added unto, unto you. you. Yes, that is a, that's a verse for all of us, right? So always seeking God's kingdom first. You guys are on fire tonight. We mm -hmm. love it. We love it. I smell the smoke. All right. So next we're going to hop into question number six. Um, again, this was Kyle left all these like really thick passages for me to break down. And guys, I just said two, four, six, six, <laughs> there were so many things, but I just picked out a couple things um, from this passage. But as you guys know, there's so much um, from uh, verses 13 through 17. So he wanted me to explain any symbolism. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so pretty much what happened in verse 13 through 17 Explain any symbolism as you just mentioned. <laughs> um, so I wrote down that they said the dragon saw that he has been hurled to earth. Okay, so guys, we've been talking about this all night. He is defeated. All right. He he has a loss. There is no more. Um, he There's no victory for him. There's no uh, real crown. He has a loss. He has been defeated, right? So that's what I saw there. It says, um, also said that he persecuted the woman, right? So we see that the devil decided, well, because he's defeated, what was he going to do? He was going to turn his attention to attacking God's people. And so that's exactly what he is doing in this passage, right? Um, also in verse 14, um, I really uh, like this verse um, a lot because there was just so many other verses in the Bible that I really love that also speak to this as well, where it says um, the woman was given two wings of um, a great eagle. And so if you read in Exodus um, 19, verse four, it states that you yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Mm. And so this is telling us, you know, that God wants to protect us even in the middle of our trials and tribulations. Like he's telling you here that he brought them um, out on eagle's wings. And then one of my absolute favorite Bible verses, especially when you're thinking about praying for protection, um, is Psalm 91. One of my absolute, absolute favorite verses. And in verse uh, Psalm 91, verse four, it says, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Um, another verse in the Bible that I love that talks about wings, and I know you guys all know this verse, and it's this verse that is tonight's song of the night, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, right? Um, so again, one of my other favorite verses, so that will tell you guys that the song of the night is Fred Hammond, they that wait. All right. So that's the song that, so add that to your list. They that wait by Fred Hammond. Cause right here from this uh, verse. Also, I liked what it said here that they were nourished from time and times and half a time. And so when you go back to verse six in this verse, you will see, again, it's the same idea coming back. And also um, we can read about this in Daniel 19. Now, um, in Revelation verse 16, what stood out to me here, Revelation 12 verse 16, it says, but the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which a dragon had spewed out of his mouth, right? So there is just so much here, but I think when I was reading this, what it made me think about was in Isaiah 59, verse 19. And it says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, here's the key part, guys. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And so we see here, right, that, you know, in the prior verse, it said that, right, what had the enemy done? He had spewed water out of his mouth like a flood. But guess what? The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So your Lord, your God is always ready with an answer. So it doesn't matter what the devil tries to do to you. He will never be able to take you out because the Lord, your God fights on your behalf and he has a plan for how to deal with him. So that was what I kind of mm -hmm. saw in this passage. Amen. Just like um, come to Christ said in regards to the Fred Hammond song, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Because the Lord is on our side. That's really awesome. And it's funny. I think you took probably like five of the verses I was going to utilize, but I'm glad we're on the same page um, in regards to 
um, you know, you know, the Lord lifting up his people on eagle's wings and just making sure. And I think what that says is that God is going to cause us to rise above the situations that we're in. So even if you're in a dark situation, never shrink below it. Always look up to the Lord and he will help you to rise above your situation the same way um, when Peter was in the boat and Christ was on the water and he said, come out, Peter. Um, well, Peter decided to come out and he said, told him to come out. Um, the only reason that he was able to walk on the water was because he kept his eyes on the Lord. The moment he took his eyes off the Lord and looked at what was going on around him, looked at all the problems, looked at all the craziness, he began to sink into those things. So whatever you give attention is the thing that's going to consume you. So you have to be willing to give Christ your attention so that he can instruct you to do what he's called you to do. It's the same with a teacher. You can't learn anything if you're not paying attention in class. Well, guess what, guys? As Christians, life is a classroom, and we have to be willing to listen to the teacher who is Jesus at all times because the world is a classroom, and it's always I mean, I feel like there's multiple teachers here. There's a teacher who's trying to teach us lies, and there's a teacher who's trying to teach us the truth. So we have to be willing to listen to the voice of truth and ignore the voice of lies. And when it tries to get into our minds, we say we rebuke you, we rebuke you Satan, the same way Michael did when Satan tried him. Amen. All right, guys. Lots of comments in the chat box to go through. Um, you know, uh, come to Christ. Uh, and uh, Malachi Lari had some points here that said, um, maybe Satan saw ahead of time that Israel and many others would receive salvation from the Lamb of God. Uh, Israel was brought into the wilderness to be saved by God and nourished for three and a half years. You know, he brought us out and always saves us from our enemies and helps us mount up on eagles. Uh, so, so that same verse as well, we were on the same page here and she loves Psalm 91 and um, praying that prayer of protection as well as Fred Hammond. So Satan was trying to get the people of God flooded like in Genesis when God wiped the earth because of the iniquity of the earth. Uh, but the earth swallowed the, the flood instead and the devil's attempt failed as usual. The dragon was angry and now Israel and the 12 tribe and the rest of the seed of the Abrahamic covenant, Gentile nor Jew, which do the will of God and have the testimony of Christ on their side. Amen. And also another verse for you guys, 2 Kings 14, 26. Mm -hmm. All right. So, guys, those were some fantastic points that you guys made here. I think Kyle also has another point he wants to add to this. It's a lot going on, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just I just have a lot coming in. Like I read the comments and then I have something. But um, when it talked about and the dragon was verse 17, the dragon was enraged with the woman. And when he and I'm sorry, and he went to make war with the rest of her offsprings who kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Um, that right there says that because of our faithfulness to God, yes, we'll be protected, but um, we will also be under attack. You know, not because we've done anything wrong. And a lot of times we feel like if something goes wrong in our lives as Christians, we feel like we've done something wrong. Listen, it's not always the case. Sometimes you're doing everything right. And because you're doing right and because you're because of who you're doing right by, which is God, Jesus, the enemy is going to attack you simply because you belong to him. So don't look at you don't look at your problems as, you know, as punishments. Sometimes look at them as, you know, not necessarily blessings. They can be used as blessings, but look at them as a confirmation sometimes that you are doing God's will. And a lot of the times, you know, just to keep doing his will, because you're going to be attacked for doing the right thing sometimes by Satan. Um, but it also reminds me that um, it talks about the church fleeing and then the offsprings of the church being attacked. Um, a lot of the times this could be us in our lives too. A lot of times we may be doing the right thing and the enemy will try to distract us by, you know, trying to go after those we love, harming others. You know, it could be family, could be a spouse, could be a child, could be whatever. The enemy can use situations to kind of go against them to get to you. But you just have to remember to pray the blood of Jesus over any situation and to trust that God is going to work those things out and obviously keep whoever it is prayed up. But just remember that, you know, the enemy, you know, is like a roaring lion who he may devour. And a lot of times people try to devour you by harming those you love because that's the thing that's going to get to your heart. And that's why I'm saying attacks us because, you know, you know, we're Christ, we're God's heart. So he's going to come after us or come so that he can harm him. So just remember that, you know, those two points there. 
Um, thank you. And uh, Donovan says, Revelation 12, 17, remember this woman was clothed with the sun, son of righteousness, arise with healing in his wings. The Lord is our righteousness. She's clothed with the righteousness of Jesus. Amen. That, Donovan, that's a great point. Um, come to Christ. Um, Malachi said he saw that he was cast to earth. So he saw his future and acted to exterminate Israel. Or maybe he's talking about the terrible things that happened after Christ came. The, the making war seems to refer to both spiritual and physical, especially considering what happened to our people after the cruci um, uh, crucifixion. And so, you know, remember in Ephesians 6, verse 12, it tells us that we wrestle not with uh, flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the principalities and powers of the dark world. So, yes, it, you know, it could also be um, spiritual um, wrestling. Donovan said, Jesus himself is her righteousness. All thy commandments are righteousness. Psalm 119, verse 172. Jesus kept the law. His righteousness is her. This is the same woman from verse one, just washed by the blood. Amen. Donovan, like I'm saying, you guys are coming tonight. I, you guys, I, I I want you guys to keep studying just like this for these uh, the rest of these Bible studies. because it's just, lives. <laughs> it's just making it so um, interesting, like as we have these perspectives where we are, we all have similar verses that we use to make these different points. Uh, TT says it is a blessing because we will get our reward in heaven. Yes, absolutely. God said, blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness. Amen. Um, come to Christ said, amen, Donovan. Uh, Zama says he's angry that he couldn't get the woman. And so verse, verse, eight, uh, verse 17 says he then went after the woman's offspring and the offspring refers to followers of Christ. So I agree, Kyle, that it's not necessarily anything we've done, but simply that we've decided to follow Christ. And you know what? Um, once you've decided to follow Christ, there's no turning back. You know, there's that song, which we'll get to later. That's another one. Um, and come to Christ as we're coming with the fire. Yes, we'll be back for more. Yes, got to stay in the word. Definitely. Um, that is such a good point. Um, and just going back to Zama, another song for the night based on what you just said, Zama is, I don't know if that's the name of it, but I have decided, right? You I, know, have decided. I have decided. So that's your song. I don't know who wrote that song, Some but um, I'm, <laughs> if you guys have sung that in church or watched you, I'm sure you've heard it. I have decided. To follow Jesus, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. You know the rest of it, right? How do you want to end the second part without the, turning back? Right. Come on, sing it. No, no turning back. back. All right. Zama says it's our hymnal. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you guys know it's that song. Um, I have decided. So it's really great. Um, Come to Christ says she. Um, you guys should listen to Fragrance to Fire by Dunsing. Oh, ye can, I, come to Christ. You always give us these <laughs> names that I'm not sure I'm pronouncing them. I'm probably butchering these people's names and I apologize um, if they ever were to see these videos. Like, but Dunson Oyekan, I'm assuming that's how you say his name, um, uh, Fragrance of Fire. So we will put that down. Zama says she missed the hymnal songs. Yeah, right. You know, you guys remember in church singing those songs like, it, there's just something about like those whole like church hymns that just really like, you know, there's just something about them, the way you feel them in your spirit. So uh, really awesome. Um, Mo said, that's definitely something I've noticed is that Christianity is a lifestyle. It's about what we do every day and what choices we make. Yes. Mo, again, Mo, yes. Another point. I love like when we like also talk about how is this applicable to our present life, you know, and what's going on, you know we make a choice every single day. And so we are either making the choice for Christ or we're going to make the choice to follow after darkness. And so once you've come into the light, you know, we need to stay in the light of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, come to Christ. Yes, you've been setting me up with these names that I can't pronounce. <laughs> um, so I hope, like I said, if they ever see this, so I apologize. Um, the hymns never get old. We are the salt flavor um, of the world without us. The world is bland. Oh. So guys, that is Revelation 12, we went through what the meaning was, we went through certain verses. Um, we don't know what version you use, whether you use the you know, Revelation 12, King James Version, NIV, NLT, but we all came to some wonderful conclusion and shared some of the very same points. 
Um, you guys are so awesome. And we could tell that you guys really dug into the word. And we are just so proud um, of all of you guys, like staying through to the end of this Bible study and also um, coming with, you know, the word that, you know, was placed in your heart. And, you know, mm -hmm. it says study to show yourself approved. And guys, you know, there's all we always need to study. But I just feel like what we're currently going through in our world, like if there was ever a time we need to be in the word of God, really like studying and, you know, talking about who we are, understanding our identity in Christ, it is now more than ever. And so, you know, you guys, we're just so incredibly proud that you guys, you know, studied so hard this week with us. Um, next week, we will be looking at Revelation 13. Um, on By Thursday on our community page, we'll put up the questions that you guys can start preparing, but you guys can start reading now. I'm sure Kyle is most likely going to be it up. <laughs> uh, reading tonight <laughs> and coming up with the questions. Um, so we're going through this entire book off of revelations, right? And so we're on 13. If you've missed one through uh, 11 so far in our Bible study playlist, you will find all of those um, different um, Bible study we've done. Or also if you click the link in the description um, box for this video, you can find the links to all of the Bible study. We mentioned earlier that we now have Rose to Forever merchandise and Merch. that, um, a portion of those proceeds um, obviously a portion goes to the church and then a portion also goes towards Matthew 25 ministries um, to support them in their mission to clothe and feed the hungry and those who are less fortunate. Um, so the link to that is also in the description box. Um, Rose said this was fun. Thank you, Rose. Amy Rose, thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on here with us. Come to Christ says Revelations was definitely a great choice. Donovan says, amen. This was a blessing. And we're we're going through the entire book of Revelation. Yes. And once this Revelation series is over, who knows? I was thinking I didn't tell Christ, um, tell this to Kyle yet. So um, I feel bad. I'm probably ambushing him right now. But I was thinking after Revelations, we should, you know, go to Daniel and go through the book of Daniel. I just think it just kind of makes sense. Like, you know, so we'll see. Um, but before we leave, we always have to close out Bible study, right? You open with prayer, you close it with prayer. Um, so uh, Kyle's going to pray us out with this Bible study. Come to Christ says merch. We love you guys. Stay safe. You too, uh, Lariah <laughs> and you. Malachi. All right, let's close out our Bible study with the other half of this sandwich. All right. Um, Father God, we thank you for the blessing of this day and for your guidance, mercy, love, and protection. We thank you for your word and your truth being heard today. Lord, regardless of what else was heard, we just thank you for the word. Again, God, we just praise your name and we thank you for the truth. We pray that you will bless us today and that you will um, allow us to be made better because we have heard your word, because we have fellowshiped together, because we have studied to show ourselves approved, because we have taken the time to read the truth and spend time with you and your fellow believers. So God, today we pray that in your most precious and holy name, Jesus, that you will protect us from dangers, both seen and unseen, grant us grace, love, mercy, protection, and honor, and most importantly, allow us to walk boldly for you, regardless of what the outcome, because we know that as long as we are right with you, everything is all right. So we thank you, God, and praise your name today as we go our separate ways, and um, but never to separate as we are spirits, um, kindred spirits together, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Um, and so we want to thank all of our, you know, everyone who joined us tonight. So for who we saw in the chat box, I hope I can remember everyone's name. Mo M, Ingrid, Donovan, Lorian Malachi, Amy Rose, TTP, Zama. Um, did I miss anyone? Um, uh, I don't think I missed anyone. I said, right? I said Donovan. You yes, said I, Amy, right? I said um, Amy Rose. I said Zama. I said Lorian and Malachi. I said Mo M. Um, Ingrid, <laughs> yeah, I think I think scrolling up is easier. I, I TTP. I think we got everyone who was here with us tonight. So, guys, we want to thank you so much for joining us. Like I said, next week we'll be back with another Bible study, same time, uh, same place. Moem said this was oh, Miss Sharon Duncan. Yes, oh, thank man. you. Come to Christ, Miss Sharon Duncan. All right, so thank you. 
Um, so come to Christ, things were funny. <laughs> and, uh, Mo, this was your first Bible study. Mo, wow, awesome. You know, we hope you enjoyed it and we hope you'll be back next week at 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here every Friday night, same time, 8.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hi, y'all talking oh, about Donovan. <laughs> oh, Donovan, you're related to Sharon. I didn't, ah, cool, awesome. Um, <laughs> Uh, but you got most of us. All right. So, guys, we hope you guys have an awesome night and a blessed weekend. Before you leave, we want to remind you, you're only one wow. prayer wow. away. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys. Take care. Take care. And don't forget, you decided to follow Jesus. There is no turning back. No turning back. No turning back.